Hello everyone! <laughs> Welcome back to another painting video. So in this video I'm going to share my process for how I do my really quick gestural landscape studies. And you could really replace this subject with anything and my process is pretty much the same. Um, in this case I'm painting from memory because we've been taking a lot of road trips lately or like short day trips and right now in Scotland late July, early August, it is absolutely gorgeous just driving around the countryside. We're in the Northeast Highlands and it's just full of farms and I, oh my gosh, I love the patchwork fields and when I fly my drone around I actually see the most amazing patterns. So I think that kind of influences my art and I like to exaggerate those patterns and, and particularly the patchwork effect. When I'm doing these quick watercolor sketches I'm not trying to perfect any one element. It's almost as if I'm painting the memories as they flow through my mind and from the top of the page to the bottom of the page it I might be thinking about multiple scenes that I've seen. So it's not any one specific place or reference, it's more like a montage of all of the really pretty things that I see during our drives. In addition, the thing that I like to keep at the forefront of my mind is that I'm, I'm giving myself permission to play. So every time I do one of these, I'm gonna try something new. That might be um, trying different mixes or it could be different methods of mark making. And in this case, I was actually experimenting with like bleeds, bleeding effects between the different fields. Because when you look out over the field, you see like very distinct color differences between each section of field. And I love that, but I also wanted to experiment with what it would look like if some of the areas sort of would bleed together because I really like the idea of having some hard edges and some really soft edges. This is my Etcher cold pressed everyday sketchbook. So it's very thick paper, very, very textured paper, which for me is perfect because I love using the dry brush technique. So a lot of times I'll just very lightly load my brush with pigment and then just dust it over the surface. You can especially see that effect in the clouds. By the way, this is my first video showing me using the new watercolors. I made a video recently with a very thorough process of how I select my colors and use a limited palette over a long period of time. Like, so the 14 tubes of watercolor I am currently using will be exclusively on my palette for at least a year. And I love this because for me personally, knowing my colors in and out backwards to forwards is extremely important for my process. And doing frequent, quick gestural studies like this is exactly how I practice my color mixing. So when I'm getting used to a new selection of colors, a lot of time, a lot of brush mileage has to go into it before I really get it. <laughs> as much as I love making color mixing charts, that is only so helpful. You really have to put that knowledge into practice by actually painting the things you want to paint. So for me, that's landscapes. A lot of the colors on my palette were carried over from the previous year. There are a couple new ones that I'm still slowly getting used to and already I've fallen in love with them. So I'm really looking forward to just diving deeper into this process. Something I've been thinking a lot about lately, and it might be partially due to um, specific comments that I've received, is how my really quick gestural, almost abstract landscape studies help me paint more realistically. <laughs> that might sound super crazy or like counterintuitive, but honestly, I think what it comes down to is that brush mileage. So because I love abstract art and working really quick and loose and like having a more emotional response to the landscape, 
Doing these types of studies is what keeps me going. It keeps me inspired and excited to paint. And even though I only share like 10% of these that I ever create, they're for me. They're for that, that brush mileage. <laughs> Doing a lot of these over and over and over again, even if I paint from the same memory or same reference photo like a hundred times, I'm going to progress each time or, or think of it or understand it in a different way each time. So this is a super important part of my process. And by doing this a lot, not only am I getting a better understanding of how my colors work together, I'm also developing my muscle memory, the way that I can control my hand to do exactly what I want it to do. And all of this plays a really important part when it comes time to do something more realistic. About half of the commission requests that I receive are for things that are more realistic. So some people love my more loose gestural stuff and they want that and others like this general style and the way I use colors but want the forms to be more recognizable or to be a almost portrait of a specific place that is really special to them, which I completely understand. And I do really enjoy the challenge of painting more realistically but I can't just like whip that out of thin air. <laughs> like that, in order to paint more realistically, I need a very thorough understanding of my materials and how to use them, of course. So this whole process is just a really fun way to keep the brush moving. The other reason that it's really helpful to do a lot of these very loose gestural studies is because I can try a ton of different methods or techniques in a very short amount of time. And obviously you can't like perfect a technique in a super short amount of time, but just trying them out and seeing what I find very intuitive versus what I struggle more with. Then I use that experience, that knowledge to help shape what I'm going to study in the coming weeks or months. And if you do a certain technique over and over and over again, you will naturally just want to progress to the next thing. So it's a very fluid way of practicing, of working. And speaking of brush mileage, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm currently putting together a PDF or a soft cover book. I'm not sure exactly what format it'll be in, um, but basically it's a full walkthrough of my painting journey, but not only just to show like the progress of my paintings over time, but also give you as much insight and tips about my learning process because I find that with being self-taught it's really hard to figure out what to study and when to change it up and how you just keep progressing instead of like plateauing and then getting frustrated and not knowing where to go next. So I'm just trying to pack as much stuff as I can into this PDF to be as helpful as possible. And I'm also gonna add a section about how I make a living with my art because I feel like for a lot of people that is a natural curiosity or maybe the next step in the evolution of being a self-taught painter. I know not everyone goes into this to make a living, but you know, I just want to offer that information and maybe help someone else get through some of the struggles that I experienced along my journey. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing me ramble on about this. I would love to hear what helps you guys stay inspired and helps you get that brush mileage. Definitely leave a comment if you have any tips or suggestions. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because that really helps my channel. Alright, I will see you again soon. Take care.